Okay, let's talk about all of the drama in mineral versus chemical sunscreen. I'm Dr. Heather Rogers. I'm a board certified dermatologist, as well as the founder of Dr. Rogers Skincare. And I'm here to give you unbiased, honest information about skincare so you can take better care of your skin. There is so much drama. This is like bigger than the Kardashians. Like there are so many different things that you could or couldn't think about if you care. But the take home message, if you stop watching this right now, it's that any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. And you need to think of sunscreen as our most powerful anti-aging tool. They don't care if it's sunny out, um, you still put sunscreen on every single day because 90% of aging, the breakdown of wrinkles, collagen, brown spots is caused by radiation that comes from the sun. So you need to put sunscreen on. Now, in regards to what type of sunscreen, there are two big groups. There is the mineral-based sunscreens and there are the chemical-based sunscreens. First of all, that name is terrible because everything is a chemical, but because that's what's used, I'm going to continue to use that breakdown. Um, I personally prefer zinc-based sunscreens, zinc more than titanium. And the reason for that is that there is some unknowns with chemical sunscreen. That does not mean that chemical sunscreen causes cancer. It means that we don't know what high levels of chemical sunscreens in our blood and in our urine mean. So a few years back, a study was done that was published in JAMA looking at how much we absorb chemical sunscreens when we apply them to our body and what the conclusion of that article was that we absorb a lot, 10 to 100 times more than what we thought and what we had studied to know was safe. So the study didn't say, oh, this is bad for us. It just said, wow, we're absorbing a lot more of these chemicals. And the ones that we absorbed the most of were octinonate, homo, um, I can't even remember all the names. It was um, octinonate, um, avobenzone, and homosalate. Those were the ones that we absorbed in much greater amounts than we thought. So the FDA took away the label that those were generally considered safe and asked the sunscreen companies to do studies to prove that they were safe, but they didn't take those sunscreens off the market. So if we look at in this capitalist world we live in, if you are selling a bunch of sunscreen and you have been tasked, oh, see if that's safe, and until you know if it's safe, we're gonna let you continue to sell it, why would you spend the money to do the studies? And why would you ever stop selling something when you've been told you haven't had to? So that call by the FDA really just kicked this problem further down um, the river because no one's going to do the studies because they don't want to know if they're safe or not. So are they safe? We don't know. Are they dangerous? Probably not. Um, there is also some data that those same chemical sunscreens are harmful to coral reefs. And let's be realistic here. There's a lot of things going on in our world that are hurting the coral reefs, fertilizer, global warming, pollution. Um, and these chemical sunscreens are probably a very small part of it, but that's the reason why some chemical sunscreens have been banned in like the state of Hawaii. So the ones that we have sort of studied and know that they accumulate in our blood and in our urine are octinonate, um, homosalate, and avobenzone. So I choose to avoid sunscreens that have those in them. I choose to use zinc-based sunscreens. But let's not say that zinc-based sunscreens are perfect. Um, there are some problems with zinc-based sunscreens. The first of which is that they're not very cosmetically elegant. Um, for many people, particularly people of color, it leaves a white mass that is sort of a sheen that can be noticeable for hours after you apply it. Um, and so there has been a push to make zinc-based sunscreens more cosmetically elegant. And the way that has been done is by adding an ingredient that will um, make the product sort of smooth out and spread better on the face. That ingredient is called buccal octal salicylate. And the reason why that's important is that ingredient is actually a chemical sunscreen. So it's not labeled a chemical sunscreen in the United States, this is the drama, but it's being used um, for a different reason. It's being used to help the zinc spread out better while maintaining a high SPF, but that ingredient is actually less well studied than the chemical ingredients that I've already talked about, the homosalate, the octinonate. So we are adding a new ingredient that's less well studied that we think is equally absorbed into our body 
equally harmful to the coral reefs, but because it's not labeled a chemical sunscreen in the United States, brands are able to claim that their ingredients are reef safe and that they are free of chemical sunscreens, even though they're not. So when you pick up some of these new cosmetically elegant zinc-based sunscreens, know that they probably have a chemical sunscreen in it that your body will absorb and is quote unquote harmful to the coral reefs. And the number one is the buccal octal salicate. All right, that was a lot of information. Thanks for sticking with me. If you found this helpful, please like the video, please subscribe. We are going to have weekly educational videos coming out. And if you want even more information, follow the link below to my blog.